Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We have winners and losers of 2023 pickup truck sales in the US. I love how you fake that excitement. That is awesome. Hey, this is not, not, there's nothing fake about this. I love numbers. He does. I love spreadsheets. He does. I love specs. That you do. <laughs> uh, and, and we have all the numbers, dude, for 2023. I've been waiting for this because 2023 was up and down year. Yes. And, and I've been waiting because most manufacturers now don't report monthly mm -hmm. on their how they're doing. And now finally everybody reported. Ford, GM, Ram, Stellantis, Toyota, Nissan, everybody did. That's right. And one of the things you have to keep in mind about sales numbers is that there's a lot of projection that's out there. Because when you're looking at truck numbers, they're very different than car numbers. And some automakers actually combine them to make their numbers sometimes look better. And sometimes they'll separate them in order to make them look better. So it really does depend. Uh, so for those of you who are reading headlines such as General Motors sales are on fire, yes, yes, they have improved. However, what you're about to hear here is specifically about their trucks, which may tell a different story. Yes. And um, that's why we're calling this podcast Winners and Losers, because there were definite winners. Mm -hmm. And if you lose uh, losers. <laughs> and also... One of the predictions I made last year did not come through. Yeah, and I, most I, of the predictions I made last year failed too. <laughs> but I want to say that 2023, I like I, I look at 2023 as the real recovery year uh, from the pandemic uh, downturn. But <laughs> then all of a sudden the UAW comes in and um, the big strike happens. Now I'm not blaming anybody in particular, but I'm just saying that that indeed it affected did, sales. It did not help our up and down year. No, no, and it really screwed up our predictions. Yeah, it did, for sure. So uh, how about this? First, let's thank our supporters on Patreon. Absolutely, yeah. Because we have to, because there's a lot of you guys supporting us. And a lot of actually comments and questions are coming through as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Patreon.com slash TFL car is our only page on Patreon where you can support us. This is also a page where you can talk to us directly. Yes. Yes. But you don't have to do that. I mean, you could just listen to our podcast and we're very happy. Or if you view this video, you can always leave comments below. We do try to read our comments. And if we have the time, which believe it or not, with eight channels, it makes it difficult to do. Um, yeah, uh, we don't always answer them all. Cool. So, for example, we had a um, recent question and comment from Dan. So I communicated with Dan already on Patreon. We have another one from Don Megahan, William Wallace, Saeed, a couple of comments there, Super Sparky 2, and Kyle Ebernathy uh, had some questions. So um, we'll get to some of them later. Your pronunciation's on fire today. Uh, well, because I'm psyched. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, thanks to Kyle for supporting us. Thanks to Super Sparky too. And also, Scott Power recently supported us. Thank you, guys. Without your support, we couldn't do what we're doing right but, now. By the way, that's a powerful name, Scott Power. Scott Power! Well, actually, that is like a race car name. You know, somebody yes. who's actually racing. Like Scott Speed. Well, isn't there like Will Power? Isn't that one a racer? But also, there's Mr. Speed. Yeah, there's, there's a speed. speed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, Good thank name. you guys. All right. So how about this? Let's start with the segment, best-selling segment in the United States, yes. which is the full-size pickup truck segment. We're talking about the F-Series. We're talking about Silverados, Ram 1500s, and heavy duties. We're talking about Tundras, all of those things. Even the Nissan Titan, which is still, which is still around. It's still around, technically. Yes. Yeah. So, and I can, uh, this is a big winner. This whole segment uh, if you talk about half-ton trucks and heavy-duty pickups, it grew 9.3% year-over-year in in general, in cohesive, um, just the entire segment. Why do you think that is? <sighs> I, I think part, you could, the comment you made about being a recovery year, mm -hmm. a pickup truck is still a tool at the end of the day. I know the prices are going up, like we talked on previous several, podcasts. Several times, yes. Um, and there are many reasons for pickup truck prices going up, partially also because they're becoming a luxury vehicle as well. Right. Or a family vehicle as well. But at the end of the day, they're also useful vehicles because you could load stuff in the bed. You could carry things. You could tow things behind them. And when you're recovering from a downturn, you need tools. You're right about that. But in addition, I wanted to add something. If you look at fleets... And yes. by the way, uh, we usually don't have the specific numbers for fleet sales. However, you can squeeze a few things out of individual companies. So very large firms will advertise that they recently bought 100,000 trucks or whatever. And so you can kind of figure out a few things. But fleet sales are definitely part of that. And when you're looking at heavy-duty trucks, 
Fleet sales are a huge part of those vehicles and their worth. And and in addition to that, I have a theory mm -hmm. about chip sales. Now, chips are still a little bit lagging in terms of getting back into the market. And a lot of the uh, midsize and full-size trucks that are out there still suffer from, you know, all the electronics that are in there not having the right chips and everything else. However, heavy-duty trucks in many cases are less advanced or less technologically needy. And as such, they were able to maintain construction of those vehicles throughout both the strike and the downturn and the chip shortage, I think. that's Now, that's not verified, but I think that is like a gut feeling, and I think I might be right. Yeah, and most manufacturers don't actually split uh, like how heavy-duty trucks are doing versus half-ton trucks. Yes. Uh, except GM. GM does that do a little bit of more refined reporting on their numbers. <clears throat> um, and, of course, we don't have all the registration data. Right. We're, we're not admins or, uh, you know, company with a giant ac you know, access to all the databases. Uh, we just go basically on the numbers that manufacturers are reporting Correct, Amando. to us because they're all public publicly traded companies. Right. Um, so the best, if you combine all the General Motors full-size pickups in, into one, they were still number one. I know Ford likes to say F-Series is the best-selling brand. Yeah. And it is by name. By brand, yes. By, by name, it is. But if you combine General Motors, 839,056 trucks were sold, which is 11.1% improvement over the last year. That's a huge up game, up so game. that's combining Chevrolet and GMC. Yes. And Ford F-Series sold 750,789 F-Series trucks. By the way, I checked with Ford. This includes F-150, mm -hmm. all of them. F-250, all of them. All F-350s, 450s, 550s, and 600s. So these include some chassis cabs, like we talked about, some commercial vehicles. Right. Um, and also consumer versions of those vehicles. And also the Lightning is in this number. Ah. So so F-Series truly is, by name, still the number one brand. Although when you combine all the GM brands for pickups, they're still higher. Yeah. All right. So you guys got that? There will be a test when we're done. Okay. Uh, there is one loser. One. I'm not surprised, though. It's Ram. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, they dropped. So they dropped 5% year over year for the year. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a tremendously huge downturn in their sales, but still 5% is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, they sold 444,926 pickups in last year, and they're not doing so hot right now. So last year, uh, the year before, it was like they got 24,000 sales more, give or Approximately, take. Approximately, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so... There are many reasons that we could cite, but yeah. I think the simplest one is that this is still a fairly long and tooth vehicle, and, or the Ram, and in addition, they are coming out with a brand new one, or almost almost brand new. It's, yeah. it's a heavily refreshed one. Yeah, the 2025 Ram 1500 is just a couple of months away. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're reportedly starting production on the new Ram 1500 in February of this year, and it should be at dealers either in March or April of this year. So... That should help their sales quite a bit. Yeah. But there's also a lot of headwinds. Uh, recent Dieselgate 2.0. Yes. Uh, Cummins, not Ram, but Cummins, the engine manufacturer that Ram uses. That directly affects Ram, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, has paid a huge fine for to the government, of U.S. government, for some emissions shenanigans. We still don't have a lot of details about this because it was a settlement between Cummins and the government. Right. And we know it includes software because a lot of, actually, we received several letters from you guys, the owners of Cummins powered Rams, trucks that um, some of the recalls already have happened or are happening now. Yeah, some of them have actually brought their trucks in and they've been flashed, I believe. Just software. And and then they're returned. Yes. So And pretty quickly. Yeah. And also, one, at least one of the, you guys, the owner, didn't notice any difference in their truck after mm -hmm. this reflash. Yeah. So this is still really troubling to me because I don't understand. That's a huge fine to pay. And if there wasn't a big difference, why actually agree and pay that fine? So I, I can't I can't believe this. Yeah. It, it, but the, we still don't know exactly what it affects. So to be honest with you, it's, it, it's one of those things that's going to be up there in the air. We probably will get more information throughout the year. 
and eventually be able to really, you know, get to the nitty gritty and figure out exactly what happened, what's been fixed, and how it was fixed. Yeah, and also, and I'm tra tracing the story now. It, uh, in California, there's some information, and I need to verify this, uh, double check this. But unless you do this comments update, this 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 software fix, you will not be able to re-register your truck, and it may affect other states, not just California. Yeah, Colorado probably would be next. Yeah, because you know some states are following uh, California's, um, you know. Kind of blueprint. Well, and, that, and, uh, with yeah. anything with cafe numbers tends to be followed by certain states, and Colorado is a good example of it. But there are other states that follow California, pretty much whatever they do, they'll uh, adopt. And so, I this sounds real, um, but we will be able to verify it when we yeah. do. There'll be a story. Sarama is facing some headwinds. Their heavy duty lineup, like we said, is still hasn't been refreshed in quite some time. Quite some time, yeah. So, so yeah, we'll we'll keep watching this. But the other winner was the. Toyota Tundra, they improved by 20.1%, sold 125,000 trucks plus. So the new Tundra, even though they had some growing pains with their new model, yeah. new generation, um, bam, they're, they're back and they could still be improving this year as well. I think that if they continue to improve and update the truck, uh, they should be competition for Ram at the very least in the near future. And they will be a disruptor, especially because... Their only other competitor really in the lower end class would be Nissan. And, well, you go ahead and tell them what's going on with Nissan. Well, as of uh, August of 2024, this year coming up, their factory that builds the Nissan Titan will close, retool for something else that we don't quite know what they will be building, but yep. it will be electric. Mm -hmm. So there will be no more Titan after, like, August of this year. Right. But they're still selling them. Yep. And did you see this? They improved by 27.4% last year because, of course, when you close something down, people rush out and buy it. True. But, I mean, what are the sales numbers? Well, they sold 19,000. Right. Less than 20,000 trucks. Which in a is, year. In a year, which is what I think a lot of these companies do monthly. Yeah. If, <laughs> well, I, I uh, mean, yes. that's what I mean, Toyota is practically doing monthly. Yeah. Basically, the Tundra is selling like 12, well, at least 10,000 trucks 10, every month. Right. And Nissan sold 19,000 a year. So that's a huge difference. Yeah, to be fair, uh, I don't think the announcement that the truck is going away uh, really helped them very much. Yeah, some of their sales spiked a little bit, but only amongst, I think, the Nissan you know, uh, passionate ones, yeah. as opposed to Conquest sales. Yeah, I don't think they conquested many sales. And, and then you know what the strange thing is? They still haven't dropped their price. I thought that they would drop their prices into the basement. Oh, oh no, they did not. They really didn't. Yeah, yeah. And that's really surprising. I thought that would help their sales numbers even more, but apparently not. So it's extremely low, however, up over last year. Yeah. And Sierra, I didn't mention Sierra yet, but of course, they're very, very strong. And actually, the Sierra, GMC Sierra grew by 22.4% overall which is better growth than the Tundra, and they supported a lot of the growth that GM trucks saw overall. So it seems like, this is totally counter to my understanding, the more expensive truck, the Sierra, is actually selling a little bit better than the Silverado, which is a little bit more affordable. Percentage-wise, yes. Percentage-wise, which means you guys value that brand. You value GMC and what it provides. Another theory on that is what? the AT4X and the A24. That was very strong. Uh, yeah, they were very strong. They even said it straight out there, like, yeah, we're really impressed and surprised. And also their Denali's are doing really well. So I think some people are looking at that and going, well, you know, I could get, you know, A, B, and C, but I know for a fact that if I get this GMC, I'm going to get a certain amount of luxury and blah, blah, blah. And that is one of the reasons why they're able to maintain that. And to be fair, GMC has been on a tear. They've really been doing it with styling and tech. And... Their new AT4X, yeah. I mean, it's pretty damn impressive. Yeah. And, of course, the new Canyon AT4X AEV editions are just coming out. Well, we'll and we'll get into the midsize truck. And so yeah, so say. they're still strong on that. But um, I want to close down the full segment story with this. Electric trucks. So there's yeah. several of them now, um, not just one or two. So F-150 Lightning, even though it's been in the news lately for cutting production numbers and actually raising prices again. I, know, I just which, saw the story which yesterday. Stymie, I, I, I just cannot... I, I, it's exactly the counterintuitive thing that I would have... You know, yes. You, you drop the price and you bring in more customers. So I don't understand Ford's thought here. And they're still building quite a bit, even though they cut their... Basically, their production in half is what it, was, what it is. Yes. But it's still quite a few. Half so, of, of that is still a number. So these, 
the Lightning outsold the Titan last year. So that's just that's just to show. <laughs> sorry, but that's not okay. okay I, I'm sorry to kick Nissan <laughs> yeah, Titan seriously. while it's down. Come on, dude. Uh, but F Ford sold twenty four thousand one hundred sixty five Lightnings last year. I mean, they were bragging about you know quarter million reservations before that. So. 24,000 is still a solid number, mm -hmm. but it's not anywhere near, I think, their expectations. This is technically their second year of full production. Yes. Right? So that is something to keep in mind. And also, they were hit hard by the UAW strike. And before that, they also were hit hard by chip shortages. So those things are to be taken into account. I'm not giving Ford a free pass here because... We think that even though the F-150 Lightning is a, actually a very decent vehicle for what it is, uh, it really should be a discounted truck um, as opposed to what it is now. In addition, they kept upping the price and I think alienating people. Remember what it started at, the price for the uh, work truck version. 39.9. Right. And remember, you and I went to Rifle, Colorado, to a friendly dealership down there. Correct. And we actually grabbed a Lightning Pro, which is the base Lightning. Right. That had a sticker price of forty two thousand, which I, I, which is I, like more affordable than the gas powered Ford, four by four. Coming standard with the big cab, coming standard with uh, all wheel drive, and big a lot screens. of amenities, big screens. Yeah, and and you know it was a, it was good. It was really good, and it was it actually, like too good to be true. Not only that, but it actually did better on our uh, drive than we anticipated yes. as well, which yeah. which was great. However. Ford suddenly just started jacking the price and jacking it, and, and they kept doing it. Now, I know that they were doing this thing like, well, we want to slow down the amount of orders and everything else. It's just the wrong way to do and it. And also the price of raw materials was coming up. Right. I, of course, they talked about which, that. Which we get, but at the same time, you have a promise, and people are looking at that promise, and then you break the promise. You're going to tick off a lot of your uh, consumers and our uh, fans and they're going to walk away, and they're going to go somewhere else. And that's exactly what I think happened. Yes. Still, their number one electric pickup truck sale in the United States. Uh, I'm not talking about Rivian R1T mm -hmm. because it's more of a midsize vehicle. Yep. And also, we don't have final numbers on the R1T. Correct. So at least right now, I believe, because Rivian just made a statement that they delivered 50,122 trucks. I'm sorry. Vehicles in the year. Yeah, so we don't know our own. But it includes and vans. It includes Amazon oh, vans. The Amazon vans. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So well, it includes vans and the SUV and the truck. So 50,000 altogether. So uh, Ford sold 24,000 Lightnings, only Lightnings. So I'm guessing R1T is somewhere in that same neighborhood, mm -hmm. but a little bit lower. That's yeah. my guess. I, I think that's a fair guess. Uh, Hummer EV, SUV, and truck sold 3,244 trucks. Not a huge number, but they're very expensive. These are basically luxury toys, $115,000 toys, most of them. Mm -hmm. So, But they still sold 3,200 of them. They weigh as much as an aircraft carrier. Then, but 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 we, we did have one, if you guys are curious. There's yeah. lots of videos of us actually owning one. And, and driving one. And driving one, towing with it, doing all that stuff. And Silverado started selling the EV. Mm -hmm. Silverado, uh, 461 of them were sold and these are mostly fleet trucks, and we had one of those for, for testing. Yes, yes, we did, and and as you can also see a lot of those videos. We did a ton of testing with it. Uh, important thing to note, though, that they just started near the late, the downside like of November right. or December. So, I mean, really counting those numbers, I don't think it's very fair to General Motors, with at least the Silverado. Well, well they published them. Yeah, but they did publish them, which yeah. is great. So next year is a much better way of finding out whether or not uh, their gamble's paying off on their extremely overpriced truck. And we don't really know how many Cybertrucks Tesla has delivered, but we heard 10 were delivered near their event, which they had in late November. Mm -hmm. So I put down 10. <laughs> yeah. Uh, should we update them on what we were, were expecting, possibly? Yes. So we already published the story. So check out OTFL.com um, because we my reservation came up. Yeah. I, I, right I, there. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, my reservation was approximately like 49,500. So I was like near 50,000th in line, mm -hmm. and I got an invitation a few days ago, and they said, would you like a Foundation Series truck? And I said, yes, and I put Roman's name under it. <laughs> I've been putting uh, Roman's uh, name everywhere, actually, you know, yeah. on a reservations, on pizza orders, you name it. So Yeah, so so TFL, so it was my order, but we're buying it as a as TFL, a TFL truck, vehicle, yeah. and I reserved the dual-motor Foundation Series 
for like $99,999 uh. plus tax. Um, and uh, because this is the first truck that they promised to deliver mm -hmm. um, this quarter. So Q1, we should have one. And the reason, one of the many reasons why we didn't go for the cyber beast, aside from its astronomical price. Was well, $20,000 more above that. Is that they have a battery in the bed. And that takes away from bed space, a third of it, basically. And we can't use that as a truck once you get to well, that point. But also, even, even avoiding the topic of the extra battery, it's coming later, yes. according to Tesla. So you guys would have to wait probably a year. Another six months yeah, or at more. Least, yeah. so, so forget about that for now. So we want to focus, actually. And we think that the volume sale might be the dual motor as well. Yeah, that's. I mean, technically, it starts at seventy nine nine, but Definitely. of course, this one has a twenty thousand dollar foundation series package, which includes some accessories mm -hmm. and some nice things like also badging, off road lights, uh, full self driving, Ish. in quotes, yeah. because it's really not full self driving. Yeah, of course, but it comes first, so that's what's important to us. Yep. Okay. So that's really, in a nutshell. Uh, but I want to reiterate, 9.3% overall, the market grew for full-size pickups, which I'm really pleased with. So the total truck sales combined is over 2 million. In... Over 2.1 million full-size pickups were sold in the U.S. That's... last year. So you guys say what you want about the economy, but people are buying. So, I mean, yeah. they are. And yeah. despite the fact that I completely agree with you guys about how overpriced trucks currently are... Um, they're selling them. But we're not done because we just got started. Yeah. I, I just want to make a little comment that we also track the uh, heavy trucks. These are very big commercial vehicles like mm -hmm. the Ford 650 and F750. These are, they look like semis, basically. Yeah, they're yeah, very yeah. big vehicles. Yeah, right. Um, and also Silverado medium duty, 4,500, 5,500, 6,500. These are also like international chassis built vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, they also all grew. And these are because of construction, right? right? I mean, they're really used in commercial tasks, delivery tasks, and they grew, both of them grew by at least 7% for Ford and 19% for Chevy, big, big heavy vehicles. All right. So that's also a positive. It, it is a positive. Once again, it's, it's showing some strength out there. Uh, you know, a lot of people look at the automotive industry as an indicator of how the overall uh, economy is doing, and we're aware of that. And uh, because you th how many different types of organizations feed into the automotive industry? Um, you know, you're not just talking about the components that go into a car, but you're talking about the human beings that actually have to go into putting those components in a yeah. car. And all the suppliers that have to do with that. And the infrastructure that has to maintain those people. So it's actually huge if you think about it. Yes. All right, shall we continue on to the midsize trucks? Uh, yes. Because there's a lot going on. This has been a remarkable year for mid-sized trucks because there wasn't one, but technically two. Uh, un how, how would I put it? Because it's more that it's... Okay, Sh General Motors now is selling their vehicles. Toyota yeah, since, is about since, to. Since April, yeah. 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 And But we've driven you know, these two new vehicles. And then in addition, we have all of these other vehicles that are actually doing quite well or maybe not. Uh, plus a couple that are doing poorly. Um, but there's a lot of comp uh, competition out there now. Well, here's what I said at the beginning of the episode. Um, I said one of my predictions failed. Mm -hmm. So I think you and I were here eight months ago, and we were super excited about the 2023 being the year of the mid-sized truck. Because, we said this, right? Yeah. Because the new Tacoma is coming, right. the new Ranger is coming, Bingo. the updated, updated Gladiator is coming. Yeah. Uh, uh, new Colorado Canyons are coming. Yes. Oh, my God. But, but so we're the losers in this uh, case because two out of four of those predictions did not come <laughs> or the other way around. Yeah. So half of our predictions were right. So we are on the list to purchase a Tacoma. Right. Uh, as far as we know, our Tacoma has been built and it's sitting near the factory in Mexico mm -hmm. waiting for Was at least e as we know, EPA, EPA certification. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't been shipped yet, and I think we're not alone in this because, as far as I know, no new Tacomas have shipped yet because mm. of EPA certification that they're still waiting to finalize, which means it was supposed to, I mean, Toyota was hoping to deliver it in December. Mm -hmm. It was not. We're in January. Who know? At this point, we don't know which month it will come in, but it affected sales because, but not by much. Um, Toyota, dude, I did the calculation. Toyota controls 
44.6% of the mid-sized truck segment. Almost half. There was a time when they were about at half. Yeah. Not that long ago either. But there's more competition now. Exactly. So, but still, that's a huge controlling oh, stake. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's um, massive. Uh, of the market. And actually, the current Tacoma is still doing pretty healthily. Um, they just decreased 1.1%. And they sold 234,768 Tacomas in 2023. So Tacoma is still not quite a loser. It's still very strong. Yeah. And controlling the entire segment of midsize. I'm pretty sure that had they been able to meet their December target, they probably wouldn't have lost that 1.1%, most likely. Yeah, and they uh, probably started growing in January. Yeah, because probably. what they would have done is they stopped um, building and delivering their old pickup, yeah. and, and you know we're switching over to this new one, so there's a gap, which makes total sense. And I'm not giving them an excuse. There's no reason to with that number. Uh, 234,000, actually 235,000, let's round it up. Yeah. That's a lot of trucks, right? Almost a quarter million trucks, once again. Right, and Toyota's been rock solid with their sales with the Tacoma and with, with no signs of slowing down and no signs of really failing. So uh, to the Toyota faithful, I would say that, yeah, next uh, 2024 is looking pretty good for them. But uh, I just want to bring this up. Overall, the segment of midsize was a loser. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, guys. They dropped a lot. Uh, negative 13.5%. If you look at all traditional mid-size pickup trucks together, we're talking about GMC Canyon, of course, Ford Ranger, Gladiator, Frontier, Colorado, Tacoma together. Uh, the only bright spot, the only shining light on the, on the hill. This is going to really tick off a lot of people, too. Yeah. Uh, a pickup truck that gained 21.6% year over year and sold incredibly well and moved above the Ford Ranger and above the GMC Canyon in sales is... The Honda Ridgeline. <laughs> wow. People are going to be throwing their so, phones. Um, okay. Well, first uh, of all, uh, here's our bottom line. It has a pickup bed. It has the ability to tow 5,000 pounds. Yep. And it can hold, I believe, around between 12 and 1,500 pounds. Oh, yeah. It has really good payload. Yeah, actually. so the numbers are all competitive in this bracket. And as such, it deserves to be here. And these sales numbers prove it because there's plenty of people out there who are buying them. And I'm going to go on record as saying that the Ridgeline is an excellent vehicle. No, it is not a hardcore off-road, you know, you know, boulder-bashing truck. No. But in terms of what a majority of the people are going to use it for, I think it's a fantastic ride. And it probably has the best backseat in the business. And but also... Above everything else, I think Honda has been able to satisfy the growing demand. Yes. Because I'm sure a lot of people would want to buy a new Ranger, mm -hmm. but they can't. Literally can't. They, they can't because it was completely pushed back. So, so yeah. So, Honda is a bright spot by a big margin. They sold 52,001 Ridgelines in one year. So, 52,000. That's a great number. Dude, last year they sold over 42,000. Yeah. That's a huge leap. Yeah. Uh, but, boy. Okay. Should we start um, from the top and work our way down? Uh, no, <laughs> let's start at the bottom. Oh, okay. Do you want to scrape the bottom of this? Yeah, let's scrape the bottom. Um, so, well, the GMC Canyon has always been not a huge seller. Mm -hmm. I mean, just just by the nature of where it is, it it's, of course, the cousin to the Colorado. But the more expensive cousin. But the more expensive cousin. And it's really pushing into that full-size territory on price. Yep, I agree. Right? Because we just did a video about this. I can't believe the, the new 2024 Canyon 84X AV edition, like the fully loaded one, was $69,000. For, for $69,000, you could buy one heck of a full-size truck. Yeah, for that you really could. A proper 4x4 four four, full-size so, truck. So not to, not to diss the Canyon, but... It's uh, a good truck, though. Th they did lose some sales. Yeah. And I think partially because it was a retool. Right, mm -hmm. they were coming up with a new mo new generation. Right. Also, the factory was hit by strikes. Yes. So, okay, Ranger is next. Ranger sold Ford sold thirty two thousand three hundred thirty four Rangers last year. That's a massive drop. Check this out: forty three point three percent drop, negative forty three point three percent. That's insane. They, they sold in the Q four. In the last quarter of 2023, Ford sold 839 Rangers. That's 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 almost not selling. So, few things. Once again, the factory was closed. Yes. Uh, due to the strike, 
the same factory that builds the Ranger builds the Bronco. So there's a competing vehicle being built really on the same line. And that Ford is trying to make good on a lot of those Bronco lagging, you know, orders yeah. and get them out up and out the door. Yeah. So it would make sense that they would squeeze the Ranger down a bit because a higher profit vehicle but, is the Range or is the Bronco. Yeah. And I know the Ranger does really well overseas. Mm -hmm. I was just talking to um, Robert, uh, exchanging some messages there from Australia. Mm -hmm. And the Ranger does incredibly well in Australia and other markets, you know, in Asia and Europe and Absolutely. et cetera. So it's a good vehicle. So it deserves to be better than this. It does. And so here, here's one of the issues out of many. Uh, we were expecting by now to have actually driven the new uh, and we Ranger, haven't. and we, we haven't. haven't. And the reason why is because Ford's pushed everything back. Uh, we actually don't have. Do we have confirmation on when we're going to be driving one, or no. we still don't? No, we don't. Okay. No. So Ford is is cooling their jets, um, and there's so many reasons. You know, obviously the strike had a huge you know push on it, but um, certain sales and whatnot, just like we mentioned with the Bronco. But there are also other uh, circumstances that are, I think Ford is starting to consider, one of which we're going to talk about in a little bit, and that is their little baby truck. Oh, the Maverick. Yeah, hold that thought for like exactly. two minutes. Okay, hold, hold The Maverick thought. was huge last year. It was, and was that huge. is something that we will discuss in just a moment. And so it the, may be eating into the Ranger. That's what I think. It's is, probably I, eating. And I think that Ford, uh, a lot of the um, higher-ups there are looking at that and going, hmm. I wonder if, you know, what, what we should do in order to maintain sales because the Mavericks on fire. They even boot, you know, made it more expensive, and people are still just ordering the crap out of it. You can't buy a... Uh, a you still a, have to wait. Yeah. yeah. yeah the, the massive waiting list. Anyway, let's, let's okay. continue with this, and then we'll right. get to the Maverick in just so, a sec. So the next loser, I'm sorry to use that word, but, no, it, but is. It, is, it, it is. It is a loser. Uh, Jeep Gladiator. Okay. Yeah. So once again, really expensive vehicle. I mean, if you're ordering a well-optioned, even the diesel has been discontinued last mm -hmm. year. But remember we talked about the final gener uh, final edition of the Gladiator. It was called the Far Out. And it was stickered, it stickered at $71,000 for this diesel-powered Rubicon Gladiator. During the pandemic, they went from uh, having their base prices in the $30,000 zone for like the sport with, with pretty much nothing to well into the $40,000 zone. Um, so their base prices, everything went up on that truck, and it really ticked off an awful lot of buyers out there. And guess what? When they said, oh, sorry, our mistake, we're going to drop the MSRP, I don't think a lot of people were like that hip to it because they already went and bought something else. Yeah, and of course, I mean, during the pandemic, you know, they weren't able to build a lot of these because of some chip uh, shortages right. and other components shortages. But now they lost 29.1% year over year, and Jeep sold 55,188 Gladiators in 2003, which uh, puts them a little bit above the Ridgeline. Mm -hmm. But the Ridgeline is knocking on the door, if you believe it or not, because the Ridgeline was at 52,000, Gladiator is 55,000, and then finally Nissan Frontier sold 58,000. So these three are fighting for the third place in the segment very tightly. Out of all the trucks on this list, um, now first of all, I, quickly to go back to the Ridgeline, there is an updated Ridgeline that is coming out that may actually affect sales in a positive way, possibly. Um, it's not; it's just an update. Well, the Trail Sport is our new trim, right? Which is yet again a little bit more off-road worthy, but it's nowhere near Frontier or Gladiator off-road ability. Exactly. Um, but the Frontier is the biggest disappointment for me personally. I predicted, and this is where I failed, <sighs> that the Frontier was going to have positive sales this year. I don't quite understand why it didn't. It is a good truck. It is competitively priced, especially on the lower base models, especially if you're looking at what's happening right now with Toyota with them moving their prices upward. Right now, it is one of the more affordable vehicles in its class, especially if you're looking at four-wheel drives and the uh, larger cabs and all that. Um, so I, I'm a little, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm mystified by this, and I don't quite understand why Nissan sales were affected this way. Other, and they weren't affected by the strike by much. I know they slowed a little bit. They throttled right. back a little bit with the chip issue, but not that yeah. much. Yeah, but they did sell, like I said, 58,135 Frontiers, which is down by 23.7%. <sighs> this is, once again, a pretty large downturn year to year. Yeah. And I'm with you. I'm puzzled by this because even though the Nissan Frontier, of course, it was updated in 2022, all new generation then. Right. But it's still a very competitive, solid vehicle. Yeah. That should sell more. 
Uh, it, it's just dumbfounding. Uh, the Chevy Colorado is number two in the market here at 71,081 Colorado sold. I am one of those numbers because yes, I bought one of those. Yeah, you're, um, you're the uh, one on the I'm the one on the end. Yeah. Um, but it's still because of, once again, it was a new vehicle, so the factory had to retool. Yeah. Plus the strike, it lost 20.3%. That's a big drop, uh, too. Uh, yeah. So like I said, Tacoma is controlling 44.6% of this market. Now, if you combine GM sales, you're looking at uh, 93,539. So that's that's Chevrolet and GMC. Mm -hmm. But that's still a 20.1% loss. Yeah, together. Yeah. Yes. So so next year, I'm going to say make the same prediction that failed last year. I'm going to say when the Tacoma hits the market, the new one, when the new Ranger hits the market, which it should, uh, when the new, well, Gladiator is also small, has a small update. You know, they changed the grill, they changed yeah. the interior of it. A little bit. Um, so it's a small update. The plug-in Gladiator is still not here. Yep. Um, all those things should improve this segment. They should improve this segment, yeah. but I, I still maintain, and, and perhaps you guys might be able to help me with, you know, why Nissan has dropped so much, but I think that Nissan should be able to improve their sales if they can maintain their low entry-level pricing Compared to all the other guys that are out there, especially Toyota, their main nemesis in my book, if they can undercut Toyota by a significant margin, I think their sales will go up. And also with the Titan going away, it's up to Frontier to really hold the flag, right, and push it forward I agree. Uh, for Nissan. I agree 100%. All right, now let's look at the compact guys. Yep, there's two right now, but in the future there could be more. There should be more. So the Hyundai Santa Cruz is in this segment. Mm -hmm. um, you're one of the owners. There. I am indeed, um, although I'm just past a year of ownership, so I'm at uh, almost 13 and a half months. So you're probably not in this number? I don't think I'm uh, in this number. Okay. I'm in the previous number. It's, it's Even fine. though it's a 23, it, yeah. Truck. You just it bought 22. it at the very late 22. Right. right. Um, and then the Maverick, of course. So good news here. There's no bad news here. Um, the Santa Cruz improved by 1% year over year. They sold 36,675 trucks. By the way, 36,000 trucks for pickups, mm -hmm. trucklets. 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 36,000 Santa Cruzes. Crossover pickups, I like to call them, even though some of you guys yell at me. <laughs> That's more than the Rangers sold. <laughs> it is. I'm sure they're popping some champagne over at Hyundai going, yeah, we beat the Ranger. Um, and um, uh, rumor has it that Hyundai is looking at some major updates, just like what they did with the upcoming uh, Santa Fe, which has been completely reskinned and has a new interior. Rumor has it that Hyundai's already looking at doing that in the very near future with the Santa Cruz. We'll see. Yeah, they have an uh, opportunity, I think, to keep pushing this. They really should. Um, and they have the XRT version, which is supposedly <laughs> an off-road version, but it's really uh, not it's, a really it's not. We, we, we reviewed it. Uh, I might still be on all TFL, but anyway, it's out there. And we compared it against the regular one. In fact, they were even the same color, and honestly, it was just extra schmaltz. They just threw on some... And tires. And different tires. No, the tires were the same, dude. The tires were the same. Insane, right? Okay, sorry. My, yeah, I, no, I'm no, 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 it's I'm, fine. It's because my tires my, are different. My my brain is overheating right now. Well, so, yeah. so. And, and, you know, this, let, let's face it. It's, you know, Santa Cruz. That could be going off-road okay. anyway. Uh, but so Maverick. now, the Maverick. 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 Uh, Maverick sold 94,058 trucks, trucklets, uh, which is a 26.5% improvement over the previous year when it was introduced. So 94,000 pickups... Is that's nearly three times the sales of the uh, Santa Cruz. Yeah, um, and it's it's more than Chevy Colorado. It's almost more. Wait, is it more than combined GM sales? It's it is. It's, it's more than <laughs> all the mid-sized trucks combined. Mid-sized trucks we're talking about here. GM, although so, they also outperformed the full-size trucks too in some cases. Yeah. Like so the Maverick Nissan. sold more vehicles. More Mavericks were sold than GM combined mid-sized segment. As a matter of fact, they came second. Really, just a Toyota, if you're looking at mid-sized truck yeah, sales. Yeah, so that's a huge number. I mean, and I think that could continue success here. Well, what Ford needs to do is, I mean, they, and we predicted this years back, the minute we found out about the Maverick, when Tommy did his very oh, first video. It blew our mind. Blew our mind. Blue. Because we knew that it was a winner. And that, I think, is we successfully predicted that. And that you would not be able to get one easily. And indeed, that's true. But I do believe that Ford should basically open up a whole new line and keep building these things. And they need to have two things. Plug-in hybrid needs to happen. 
And with their current hybrid, they need to have an option for all-wheel drive, which I am told they can actually build. Ford which is has, not available yet. Which is not available yet. Yes. Um, and like you said, they did increase the pricing some. I mean, the most bare bones Maverick, I believe, is like twenty three ish thousand. Which initially was at nineteen nine. Yeah, which is still affordable. I it's mean, still a very yeah. affordable little guy. And that is the hybrid. So suddenly you're getting what about forty miles per gallon combined, driving a little pickup that could still haul quite a bit. Yeah, so that's a huge success. And like you said, if they introduce additional powertrains options, they could com- continue to they win They would this. absolutely blow everything up. And that might be why Ford is a little hesitant with the Ranger. Yeah, Maybe because, they're looking at yeah. paring it down a little bit. Because right now they have, like, what, five powertrains they're talking about in the future of the, of the uh, Ranger? Well, yeah, and, of course, the new Ranger will have the Raptor version. Yes. Uh, which by itself, <laughs> you know what they could do? Mm. They could just forget about all the other Rangers and just, and just build Raptors. Raptors. Yeah. And well, um, I know they're expensive. They start at 56000 but they're powerful, 400 horsepower plus. Yeah. Uh, Fox Life Shocks, 33s. That's a great little pickup that it would blow past many more vehicles. It would essentially take everybody down a notch, except for Toyota, because we don't have the numbers on Toyota yet. The TRD Pro. Yeah, yeah. the TRD Pro with the hybrid powertrain. So it would, I mean, Ford would almost own that segment in terms of performance, which would probably help their sales. Yeah. But you know what they should do, actually? Mm-hmm. They should introduce that, and then they should do the plug-in hybrid that we uh, covered which yeah. may come into the so, States in so the next few years. So Australian market was introduced to a plug-in hybrid Ranger, right. which goes on sale, I believe, at the end of this year there, mm-hmm. not here, in Australia. Right, right. In Australia. Because apparently, you know, you guys in Australia get all the best Rangers. I know, you get all the good toys in Australia. And plus, you guys have a cool accent and really hot. And tray features. beds. You get, and mm-hmm. also uh, kangaroos. You get really good kangaroos. Wallabies. Uh, Joey's? Joey's. Joey's are small kangaroos, right? That's something I guess. I don't know. Yeah, little, sorry. You've little, been you've been there more recently than me. So <laughs> little, little Joey's. <laughs> little, little, little Joey's. So the point is, is that uh, you know overseas markets uh, tend to get some of these vehicles before we do, including diesels and whatnot that we will not be seeing here in the States. There is, as far as I know, nobody is going to be building a diesel midsize or small pickup in the United States anytime soon. Yeah, so... And we recently actually tested a new Tacoma that was a pre-production truck, and we're looking forward. We like tested we said, the hell out of it. Yeah, we did many videos, including this drag race. Um, so we're just looking forward to our production truck. I mean, we can't wait, and we'll do more. It could come any day. Um, it really, I think that we'll get the phone call probably the day after the EPA probably, numbers come out, or probably at the worst possible time. We're probably going to be at an <laughs> event somewhere, <laughs> like we'll somewhere be, else. We'll be all over the nation or even the, the world. Yeah, and, and they'll you know, call like, and be like, oh, your Tacoma is here. Yeah, and then one of us will have to cut short. and go, Because we intend to go and pick it up and drive it right back here, test the hell out of it right away. First thing we're going to do with it after we break it in a little bit, put it on the Ike Gauntlet. You know it. Um, so let's so, uh, summarize this, huh? Yeah, so the only other thing I wanted to bring up here is... Uh, the full-size SUV market, because... Those are trucks. It, it's, it's huge, and they're truck-based. They're basically... Uh, we're talking about Chevy Tahoes. We're talking about Expeditions, Suburbans, Escalades. Sequoia. Sequoias, Armadas, all those guys. Yeah. Um, and winners. Uh, if I had a bell, I would ring a bell right now, because... ding um, um, Overall... For 2023, the entire full-size three-row truck-based SUV market grew by 11.7%. So let, let, let's go down these numbers a little real quick. Why don't yeah. We? So, of course, you're not surprised that the Tahoe is number one. No. Actually, is it Tahoe and then Suburban? Yes. Okay. Um, Tahoe no. still outsells the Suburban two-to-one, basically, mm-hmm. which is, well, it's a smaller, more affordable Suburban. And more maneuverable. Well, it's and it's not that much more affordable, yeah, but, they're, they're, but it's a smaller one. Yeah. Um, I'm not surprised uh, at all. Tahoe ha- and, and Suburban have owned this market pretty much from the get-go. And there are other uh, automakers that are getting closer, but so far I haven't seen anything that's really a threat. So I did I did some math, because you know me. Um, I combined Tahoe, Yukon, GMC Yukon, which includes Yukon XL, which is the big suburban-like sure. Yukon. Suburban and Escalade, all Escalades combined. And the so big, small this is the V, this is the long wheelbase, this is the short Escalade, all of that. Everything. They sold, altogether, GM only, sold 287,108 SUVs. 
That's really impressive for that's a more than Tacoma size. sale, yeah. all of Tacomas. That's more than like all Sierras. I mean, that's a huge number by so, itself. So the U.S. truck market, which also goes into large SUVs, is very healthy. Yes, and this is an indication yeah. of that. Yeah. And and bear in mind that what's really interesting is that General Motors is in the process right now of, you know, I was telling you just recently that you know, diesels in terms of small pickups and midsize pickups, no go. Well, guess what? In these full-size SUVs, General Motors is selling uh, three different uh, full-size trucks uh, that have diesels. So you can have the three-liter Duramax in the Tahoe, Yukon, all all of these. And and the Cadillac, yeah. Yeah, all of these have a diesel. Yeah, uh, option. 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 And it's the 6.2, there's the... um, 5.3 still. 5.3. And that I believe. Oh, and also the big, the big bad. Um, oh, of course, the Escalade V. Yeah, yeah which is just the, the supercharged one, one truck, which is yeah. a beast. Which is one hundred fifty thousand. It's one hundred fifty thousand dollars, but it is the angriest uh, SUV I've ever driven, in a good way. Yes. Uh, so let's continue. So, so I mean, GM is still killing it. They control over fifty percent. I think fifty five percent of this market. Mm-hmm. Um, they actually used to control more of this market, and it's becoming more competitive. I think Ford is one of the reasons why the Escalade has improved, or Escalade, uh, the um, both the Navigator and the Expedition Expedition yeah. have really improved. So the Expedition sold seventy three thousand three ninety six last year, and grew by eighteen point four percent. That's a so good Expedition chunk. had some healthy growth. Yeah, and also Expedition prototypes are running around right now. Which means they're updating this SUV mm-hmm. probably for 2025 or beyond. Do you think it's the hybrid that everybody's been saying is a rumor? Oh, boy. That, that would be a really smart thing to do. And it would be an easy thing for them to do because... F-150 powertrain. F-150 powertrain. Mm-hmm. Also, Sequoia is a hybrid. Right. So they have to compete against that. E- exactly. Um, uh, Jeep... <sighs> okay, there's one loser here. There is. It's the Wagoneer Grand Wagoneer. Mm-hmm. So the Wagoneer... So the Wagoneer is, by the way, they're both either long wheelbase or short wheelbase, uh, but the Grand Wagoneer is just a more luxurious version of it. That is correct. Um, both of them lost sales. The Wagoneer lost 19.5%, and the Grand Wagoneer lost 9.5%. Dude, this is not a good sign, because it's a new vehicle that was just on, came to market like a year and a half ago right. or two years ago, and they're already seeing declines in sales. Being a new vehicle on the market, that's not a good sign. Well, I, there's a simple reason, I think. It's too, it? too bloody expensive. They've, aside from pricing themselves, you know, I, and I get it. You know, if you're gonna, if you're saying you're building a premium vehicle and you don't charge a premium price, then you're not being taken seriously. I know that some of the the brain trust thinks that way, and also they even like, oh no, it's not even a Jeep. It's its own brand. No, come on, guys, enough. It's a Jeep, and. This is a vehicle that is based on bones that are relatively old. Now, the good news is they did introduce twin turbocharged straight six, which will be, you know, basically going throughout all the vehicles in the near future. We get that. But the reality is, is that you have a brand new vehicle that does not have a entry level price even close to what these other guys are offering. You're not going to get those sales. Conquest sales, good luck with that. You need to come underneath those prices. You need to figure out a way to make that happen. And if you don't, you're not going to sell many. Well, by the way, well, they did come in into a void for Stellantis. Stellantis did not have a vehicle like this yeah. in many, many years. So I think it was a good choice for them to come into this market. But I think my theory is styling has to do something with Thank it. Thank you. That was the other yeah. point. Yeah, because yeah. it looks the a lot like... The price is one thing. Right. The, it looks so much like the Grand Cherokee. And it also looks like a school bus at some angles. Yeah, from, the, the, from wheel, the wheel wells, guys, they're tiny. They're it, squared off wheel it's wells. It's really flat, and it's just... It doesn't evoke anything that really reads into Jeep. Now, the good news is I've seen some um, not prototypes, but one-offs that have gotten a SEMA and whatnot that look really cool. So there is potential there to make them look better. But the bottom line is that if you can't look back at your car when you're walking away from it in the parking lot or your truck and go, hmm, I really like what I bought, then I think you're going to miss the point here because that's so much money to lay on the line. The bottom line is about the Fords. And the General Motor, uh, Ford and General Motors, and to I say Toyota personally, I, I love the way uh, the Sequoia looks. I think yeah. they're better looking vehicles. That's now I know yeah. it's it's uh, it's, it's part of it. It's part of it. It is but, really. But you know, you're buying sometimes with your brain and your heart. As right. Well. So your brain might say, okay, I, I really want you know a lot of capability here, but your heart also needs to say something. I want it to look really yeah. cool, and and for people not to look at it and go, oh, is that suburban? I guess so, and just walk away, as opposed to what you can get with you know Cadillac styling. I'm not a big fan, but it is polarizing, and you know it's a Cadillac. 
right? So anyway, uh, All right. it's yeah. Let's let's continue. Enough said. Let's go to Toyota because Toyota and Lexus are doing really well here. Um, the Tundra was the first vehicle on the new chassis. Mm -hmm. Then came the Sequoia. Sequoia grew by three hundred and seventeen point four percent, basically quadrupling their sales from before. And they sold twenty two thousand one hundred and eighty two Sequoias, which doesn't sound like a big number, but it's right above the Armada already. So it's already outsold the Armada. I think this proves that Swears was absolutely right about what he did. Even though there, some of the execution of the uh, Sequoia is a little bit up in the air. The third row is really the biggest issue I have with it. Yeah, It's just sure. not a particularly good third row. It's not competitive with the other ones out there. In fact, even the Grand uh, Highlander has a better third row in terms of comfort. However, in terms of towing, overall capability, hauling, it is still a proper truck, and I think it looks fantastic, especially in TRD guys. Yeah, TRD Pro specifically. It looks great. And actually, uh, uh, you and I, we went uh, to do an auction video this week mm -hmm. um, at the Colorado Dealer Auto Auctions, and I saw a modified Sequoia roll by by um, our friends at um, Running for Tacos. Oh, okay. And I started drooling. You know, they, that lift, good. they lifted the Sequoia, they put 35s on it, okay. and new bumpers, you know, steel bumpers all oh, the way cool. around, yeah. and I started to drool a little bit. This has to fill the void until the uh, next Land Cruiser comes out, which we are hoping is going to be. Now, here's here's a question for you. Yes. Are you going to count the Land Cruiser? It has a frame in the uh, future. Hmm. That's a good question. But, so we'll but, leave this. But it's kind of mid-size-ish. I know, I know, I know. So would it be considered so, a mid-size? You know where I'm gonna count it. Um, I, it's really the new Land Cruiser that's coming. Mm -hmm. I would say it's a competitor to the Bronco and the mm -hmm. Wrangler. So that means really. it'll, it'll be a car. So it'll be a car in my world in terms of video and stuff like that. Yeah. But that's a tough one. Yeah, because uh, it has to, a frame. To, it's, it's it almost has the same frame as the Sequoia. That's my point. Well, it, it's just like a slightly smaller Sequoia and slightly larger than, say, a Tacoma. I, do you think Toyota, and we discussed this on the car podcast mm. over the New Year's, it seems like Toyota is doing too much. I don't think so. No? I think Toyota can handle it. Not only that, but they're doubling down on everything in terms of hybrid, and they're kind of spitting in the face of everybody saying, go EV. And I think by doing that and just saying, look, we can crank up the heat, they can handle it. And that's one of the things they can do. Now, on the other side of it, they may stretch themselves too thin and it may hurt sales somewhere else. However, I mean, you know, you know what that could hurt? Hmm. Quality. That could. And because if, that if you're happens, stretching thin, something could give. You're right. You're right. So we got to keep an eye on that. Toyota, I mean, that, they're known for that. In fact, the first thing they tell you every time they drag us into one of these press events is that the quality is one of their most important things out there because they want their reliability badge to stay shiny. But if they overdo it, maybe quality that's, could suffer. So my, we'll keep an eye on that. I'm not saying it will. Small concern there. Okay. Small concern. Let's continue. We got a couple more. Uh, yeah, a couple more. Ar Armada is still doing really well. It, it sold 21185 and grew by 77%. Where's the Armada coming from? I think it's I mean, partially price. Remember, we covered it before. And affordable price. Yeah. They're I mean, entry, relatively speaking. Compared to, yeah. If you look at their price for what you get a fairly well-equipped Armada, versus, say, Tahoe, Cadillac, any of those other ones, you're right there in the space where it's like, oh, this is way, you know, I'm saving five dollars $6,000. That could be helping it. And the other thing is, frankly, it's just a damn good truck. It's not perfect, but it's very good. And very comfy. Yeah, for the uh, price, I think it's quite good. Yeah, also success with the QX80. Uh, it's basically a brother truck, sister truck to the Armada. It's just different skin uh, and, and, and slightly nicer interior. Grew by 76%. So both of them are just... Runaway success. Isn't it crazy that they're still using the old transmission? I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's 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 kind of nuts. But and hey. also the refreshed. Uh, I'm sorry. The refreshed Infinity QX80 prototypes have been running around for months. We've been hearing about twin turbocharged V6s and stuff like that. It's the yeah. Rumor. So, but we still don't have a product. You know, Got a, nothing. official word. Right. A Lincoln Navigator. You mentioned it grew by thirty two point nine percent. Navigator is really healthy. But it's outsold by the Escalade, unfortunately. Uh, the Navigator sold seventeen thousand five ninety five forty nine, but it grew, so it's okay. Yeah. What was the Escalade's sale? Uh, Forty one thousand overall. Okay. So really, more than double the uh, Navigator sales. Yeah. So even though they technically compete head to head, technically speaking, in terms of the market. Yeah, but there's no like twin uh, supercharged V8 well, Lincoln. That's what my point is so, that there's more variety with yeah. Cadillac, so that's one of the, I plus, think one of the Plus Cadillac has diesel. 
Yep. So if you want long more range variety. Or, or efficiency, more variety on the Cadillac yeah. wins. Yep. Uh, finally, Lexus LX. This is the sister truck to the Sequoia. Mm -hmm. Grew by 91.1%. I thought it was a typo. No. 91. No. I it, it was... almost doubled its sales. Damn. Dude, and we recently tested an LX 600. It was like $120,000. It was it was like a private jet on the wheels. It was really luxurious. It had a really nice interior, I got to say, but um I'm I'm not one of those who's going to say go out and buy one because I thought that there's better deals out there, but it's still a hell of a truck. Yeah, so overall full-size pickups and heavy duties, huge yep. increased success. Full-size SUVs, huge success. Big success. With a couple exceptions with, with a minor exception or two. And mid-size trucks lost. Yep. So there you have it. I think we can tie this whole thing up in a bow and say that overall 2023 was a successful year for the truck market. However, there were some losers. And I that's essentially rephrasing what we essentially, we opened this video with. Yeah, yeah. And uh but overall I think I'm hopeful. Because like we said, I think mid-size truck segment will recover this year mm -hmm. with all the new updates that we just discussed. And I think the other markets, like the SUV market and the full-size truck market, I think will continue on a similar trajectory unless something insane happens that we can't foresee. Well, what, this is what we know. We know that in the near future, we're going to be hearing something about the new Ford uh, Ranger. What we're going to hear, we don't know, <laughs> but we're expecting to hear something. Uh, we are expecting to get our hands on the Toyota Tacoma Hybrid, in the near future, so we can hopefully have that tested, and that's gonna be part of this fray. Um, and then in addition, we are expecting updates to almost every truck out there that's including the Gladiator, that a lot of you guys are like, dude, what is Jeep doing? We're expecting something, uh, a real update. So those are things that may very well happen in 2024, or should happen in 2024, and, and there's more. And there's a couple more predictions, uh, actually not predictions, things we know for sure. Mm -hmm. The new Ram 1500 is coming for sure. Oh yeah. We know this in a couple of months. Uh, we know that the 2024 updated F-150s are almost ready to hit dealers as we speak right now. So that's gonna continue the push. Yep. Um, and it seems like Ford is updating their F-150 almost every other year. It's really interesting it's that like the new front ends that they're doing, and it's it, we just had a conversation about that. And uh, good for Ford for doing that because it keeps things fresh and it keeps people guessing in terms of what is new and what isn't new. I think it's a wonderful idea, especially because they have different trims that actually have unique front ends or unique headlights. Great idea, keep it going. I'm hoping that other truck makers do that. And I think um, the heavy duty market will remain mostly the way you see it now. So not nothing new, huge. We haven't heard from Ram yet. I mean, not with, they not with really, heavy duties, no. They should really update their heavy duty truck, but we haven't heard. But there is one more thing that we heard. Ah. Silverado heavy duty, Trail Boss. That's right. Is coming. So they do have a Z71, they do have the Bison. ZR2. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to add to it with the Trail Boss on the heavy duty side, which should be a more affordable kind of. It should bridge truck. the gap between. We haven't seen it yet. Yeah, we haven't. Um, so that's good news. Yep. So there's a lot of truck news coming around the corner, a lot of truck events that we're expecting to have uh, coming up in the future, and we will be updating you every time we get an update, which is usually every week. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, and of course, we'll see you next week at here at. Beautiful talking trucks. Rock on, guys.